Hi everyone, this is the applied review questions for exponents and polynomials. This first section here, uh, page 386 and 387, is on the polynomials. And then the exp exponents, which we'll do later in the video, is here on page 358. So we're going to work through some of the most common questions that I would probably have from a student and uh, see how those work. All right, so the first question is this. This is number 2e on page 386. Uh, it says, simplify by adding or subtracting the like terms. So the key here is simplify. If we're trying to simplify, we're trying to make it look simpler. And so in this case, we're going to say, well, what are the like terms? Well, this 2x squared and this x squared are like terms. Because remember what a like term is. It has to be the same variable also to the same power. It doesn't matter what the number in front is. So 2x squared and positive x squared add together to give me 3x squared. And then we also have these x terms. So we have, anytime it's just a, a minus or a plus, it's like we have 1. So in this case, negative 1. So 3x, and we subtract 1x, we're going to be left with 2x's. And then what we're left with is the minus 4 plus 7. So we go down 4, up 7, gives me plus 3. And so, as always, if you're struggling with making those integers, you can always draw a number line, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. You can see that here for this one. We're down at negative 4. The common misconception is that when people add 7, they make it negative 11. But if you draw the number line, you can see at negative 4, and I add 7, I'm going to go up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then we're up at 3. And so that's why that adds to positive 3. All right, so there's the first one. Here's the second one that we're, I'm going to take up now, and that is 4D. It says, add or subtract as indicated. In this case, we're going to subtract. And you might as well also say it's simplifying as well, because that's what we're actually doing. So if you see the question instead say something like simplify, you're going to subtract them, get rid of the brackets, and simplify it. So the key is this. The negative here is going to change the sign on every single term that follows. So we get nothing happening to the first set of brackets. And then the second set of brackets, minus 2a squared plus 5a plus 4. All the signs are changing. This was a positive, it's become a negative. This was a negative, it's become a positive. This was a negative, it's become a positive. Okay? So now we can again combine the like terms just like we did in 2e, the last question we took up. Remembering to include the sign in front. So we have 7a squared minus 2a squared. We're just subtracting the coefficient. The a squared stays there. 7 minus 2 gives me 5. Now we have a negative 2a and positive 5a. Well, negative 2a plus 5a gives me plus 3a. And then we have 4 plus 4. That gives me 8. So there you go. You've subtracted that and you've simplified it. Number 9b tells you to copy and complete the table. And so it gives you this situation where it's 3x along the length of this rectangle, and it's 2x minus 5 along the width of the rectangle. And so it wants an expression for the area. Well, the area, it's the first thing we're doing in the table. I'm not going to put it in the table here, but I'm going to write the answer here. The area of this is going to be length times the width. Well, what does that mean? Well, the length we said was 3x, that's down at the bottom, and the width was 2x minus 5. If you called them opposite, you could have done that. You could have said the length was 2x minus 5 and the width was 3x. If you had done that, you would have gotten this, 2x minus 5 times 3x. And that can be rewritten by putting the 3x in front because the order of multiplication doesn't matter. So either one would have been acceptable. But I'm going to go with the 3x times 2x minus 5. So now it says expand the expression. So if we're expanding the expression in that second part of the table, we are going to use the distributive property. 3x times 2x, 3 times 2 gives you 6. x times x gives you x squared. You have two x's, it's an x squared. Now we're doing the 3x times negative 5. So 3 times 5 is 15. And then we have the x there, because there was no 5, there's no x with the 5, but there was with the 3. So that expands to 6x squared minus 15x. It then goes on from there and asks you for the area when x is 5. 
And so what you're going to do there, if you're asked for the area when x is 5, is you're going to substitute substitute x equals 5. And so now you're going to get 6, whoops, 6 times 5 squared minus 15 times 5. And that gives you a total of 6 times 25 minus 15 times 5 is going to be 50 plus 25. So that's 75. So we just go down a little bit here. 6 times 25 is 150, minus 75, you get 75. Because I'm really familiar with quarters and how those work, whenever I see things like 150 or 75, I immediately think of money, and that helps me to be able to do that math. So maybe it does for you too. If not, don't worry about it. But 75 is what you should arrive at when x equals 5. So if you hadn't gotten 9b previously, and you now see that solution, I challenge you now to go back and try 9a and see if you can do that one. It's the same idea. All right, let's look at 10e. 10e says this. Um, it's asking you to expand and simplify. So it says the words expand and simplify. And the expression it's asking you to expand and simplify is 5a times a minus 6 plus 2a times a plus 8. And so we're going to use the distributive property. Um, as we did in the previous question. So the 5a multiplied by the a and multiplied by the negative 6. And then this 2a is going to be multiplied by a and multiplied by 8. So 5a times a is 5a squared. Because a times a is always a squared. Uh, 5a times 6 is 5 times 6 is negative 30. And then we just have the a that was associated with the 5a. And now I'm going to go 2a times a. That gives me 2, and I have an a and an a, so that's a squared. And then 2a times 8 gives me 16a. And so we've expanded it, but now it says, and don't miss this, simplify. We want to simplify it as well. So we need to collect the like terms. That's what simplify means. Whenever you see that, think collect the like terms. And we've gone over like terms pretty extensively. But again, we'll just make sure that it's the same variable to the same power. doesn't matter the number in front, but at the same variable to the same power. So the a squares can go together to give me 7a squared. And minus 30a plus 16a. So you're going down 30, you're coming back up 16. You can use your calculators for that if you need to. But we're going to get negative 14a. And there you go. You've expanded it and you've simplified it. You've got all those like terms together. All right, the last thing I'm going to do in this video, or in this portion of the polynomials review, is this question 11. And so if this is, um, if you are in the, the class that is in the year of the COVID-19, hopefully just this year, um, you don't have to do this question. I have taken it off your review. But nonetheless, I'll show you how it works. All right, so what it's asking you to do, and I'm sorry it's a little fuzzy here. I'll maybe draw these numbers again. 5x, 4x minus 2 x minus 2 and 3x. It's asking you to find expressions for the area of the figure in two different ways. Use addition for one way and subtraction for the other. You might be like, well, how do I even do it one way to begin with? Well, let me ask you this. We know that two rectangles can be joined together to make this shape. All right? And you could join in different ways. But let's say that there's this top rectangle and this bottom rectangle. Well we don't really have any information for this length. So you might say, well, okay, well, that's not really useful because I don't know the width. And you'd be correct. So is there some way that I can divide that rectangle into two such that I have the length and the width of each rectangle? Think about that for a minute. Even pause the video if you need to. So what we get is, in fact, if we split it this way. Because if we split it this way, we know this dimension and we know this dimension. And we'll call that area one. And for this area 2, we know this dimension down here and this dimension up there. So if I calculate those two areas and add them together, I get the total area. So I could say the total area is equal to the first area plus the second area. Well, what's the first area? Well, it's 3x times x minus 2, length times width. And the second area is 5x. Notice I'm always choosing the monomial, the one term first. 5x times 4x minus 2. 
And so what that gives me is 3x times x is 3x squared. I'm using the distributive property again. I'm going to go over it a little quicker here because we've done it a couple times now. 3x times negative 2 is negative 6x. 5x times 4x gives me 20x squared. And 5x times negative 2 gives me minus 10x. Now I'm going to gather together this term and this term, giving me 23x squared. And then the other terms are also like terms, minus 16x. So that's the addition, right? We've used the addition. So it asks us to also see if we could do it using subtraction. So if we use subtraction, let's see what that looks like. Um, instead of adding these two areas, let me just draw this again. we could take this entire area and then subtract this corner piece. And so that's a little trickier, but we can do it. We know that this dimension here is x minus 2. And we know that this dimension here is 4x minus 2. And so if we add those together, that gives us the entire dimension all the way across. So adding those together, this whole dimension there would be x minus 2 plus 4x minus 2. So let's just add those two together. That's going to give me 5x minus 4. And then we already know this whole dimension here is 5x. And we know this dimension here is 3x. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find this entire area and then subtract this corner piece. So what we need to subtract this corner piece is we need this dimension right here. Well, if we have 5x for the entire height of the tall part and 3x for the height of the shorter part, that means that this must be 2x because 2x plus 3x needs to add to 5x. So the dimensions of the small part that we're going to subtract are 2x and x minus 2. And the dimensions of the entire box all the way around is 5x and 5x minus 4. So here we're going to go the total area is equal to, we're going to go um, the big area, there's no real way that you have to write this, minus the corner, the corner area. So you could have called it A1 and A2 again, we could have said A1 is the big one, A2 is the corner. It doesn't really matter, just so it's some, some way it's clear to everyone reading it how you did it. So big area, well we said the big area was 5x times 5x minus 4, so length times the width of this entire thing all the way around. Now we're going to subtract that corner area. Well, that corner area is 2x. Notice I'm always writing the monomial first, times x minus 2. So 5x times 5x gives you 25x squared. And 5x times negative 4 gives you minus 20x. Now we need to remember where this is negative. Don't, don't forget that here. So it's going to change the signs inside. It's going to change the signs because we multiply by a negative it switches the sign. So negative 2x times x gives you negative 2x squared. That was a positive, it's become a negative. And then we're multiplying by the two, negative 2x times negative 2, and that gives me positive, because negative times negative makes it positive. So that gives me 4x. So the last thing we need to do now is combine the like terms. There's a like term, there's a like term, and there's a like term, and there's a like term. So just as we did before, we're combining them, we get 23x squared minus 16x. And that is exactly the same as we got the other way by adding them together. It says to expand and simplify each expression. Well, I've actually already done that to show you that they're the same. And then it said calculate the area when x is equal to 3. And we've done that already. So what you're trying to do for part c is you're simply substituting x equals 3 and getting your answer. So in this particular case, that area would equal 23 times 3 squared minus 16 times 3. 3 squared is not 6, it's 9, right? Don't make that mistake. 23 times 9 minus 16 times 3 is 48. Again, you can use your calculator for these questions, it's fine. 9 times 23, I do the 9 times 20 first in my head. I do 180. And then 9 times 3 is 27. So that's 207 when you add those two numbers together. And then minus 48. And so 207 minus 48 gives you a total value of 
159 units, or in this case, we know, we know it's centimeters, and it's squared, 159 centimeters squared. So this is a really useful thing to do uh, if you're trying to design something, because you might want to change the dimensions as you go, but you do figure that you want one dimension to be a certain multiple of another dimension. And so this is used in different engineering tactics, and maybe one day it will come in handy for you.